Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a pretty interesting pair of tools. So these AI tools are an AI powered virtual doctor and virtual vet. I've been a little bit surprised that we hadn't come across tools like this sooner. Although I can understand that both medicine has complexities and also if you happen to get things wrong, there's some pretty serious consequences to it. These tools have been produced by a company run by Martin Scrally, which you may or may not recognize that name. Uh, somewhat controversial guy, but he seems to have moved on from his previous adventures and has been producing these amongst some other interesting tools. So I thought we would have a bit of a look. Uh, with these we get, uh, here is Dr. Gupta, who is our virtual AI powered doctor. And we've just got a little drop down, Dr. McGrath for our vet. And so what I'm going to do, we only actually get six messages uh, as a bit of a trial. Uh, then you can sign up. I think it's about $20 a month. And so I could certainly, certainly see that being quite reasonable for some people. And so I'm going to start off with some symptoms. These are the classic symptoms for appendicitis. So I would hope that Dr. Gupta, particularly the pain near the belly button and moves to the right side, uh, is going to be identified that. So let's see what they say. And so start off and you can see that we've got this warning here. Uh, they're very po particular to point out that, um, yeah, this is not really a real doctor. You're not going to be able to get actual treatment. It's not going to be able to give prescriptions. But in terms of a test case, uh, I think it's still pretty interesting. So we'll agree. We will put in our symptoms here. You can see on the right hand side, we also have a whole lot of medical information we could give it. So age, weight, we've got symptoms, allergies, medications, vital signs. Uh, we've got some lab results that we could put in there. So we can certainly give it some decent material and we can see that it's taking a bit of time to think and we'll just see, I'll leave this running and let's just see how long it takes. Uh, if you've worked with other AI tools, you'll have noticed that things like the image generation take a while. Uh, with this one, I would expect it's probably should move at a similar speed to the large language models, since I believe that's where it is sourcing its information uh, and then just adapting. So I think it's, it's got a little bit of programming on top of those large language models to make it a little bit more specific to medicine. It's taking a little while though, so let's... Give it another couple of seconds uh, before we pause. Okay, so after another probably minute or so, it came back saying that it's backlogged. Those of you that were using the ChatGPT during some very peak times, kind of prior to 3.5, will have experienced a fair bit of this as well. Uh, might give it a little wait. I'm curious to see a response from it and then also check out the vet one as well. So we'll pause again, wait a little bit, see if we can actually get an answer out of it. I am going to be quite disappointed if this counts as one of the messages used. I think that's a pretty poor user experience. If you put in your message, you just get a sorry I'm too busy and that is uh, all you get. Possibly reminiscent of the real health service, but not really what we want to see. So let's see if we can get something out of it at another point. Uh, I'll be back soon. Okay, so actually I just hit refresh and it uh, gave me the answer straight away. So it was interesting that it almost was like this answer was sitting in behind there. And we can see there that it thinks I might have appendicitis. Uh, so it has correctly identified. This should have been a pretty basic one. If it had failed this, then I think we would be completely writing it off. This is serious. Have you considered going to an urgent care or emergency room? Well, it asked me the question, but then it asks, uh, it gives me some options of other things. And then while we were talking, we found some related articles. That's nice. Let's have a look at what are my treatment options. Over on the right hand side, we can see that it's given me references uh, out of JAMA amongst other places, which is good to see. And so here is the pretty standard treatment. Take the appendix out. Okay, so this was drgupta.ai. Let's jump over and have a look at the VET one. And so I'm going to give the VET one the same set of symptoms, although now it's my dog that has the pain near the belly button and so on. I have no idea. Do you know? Do dogs have an appendix? Can they get appendicitis? Uh, certainly never heard of it, but let's have a look, see what they say. 
certainly i mean i think for any kind of pet where where you've got the um the vomiting and appetite that probably leads to a couple of things in terms of it might have eaten something uh we can see this is pretty generic stuff but i did give pretty generic symptoms having said that though you kind of imagine that your average person that's coming on here they're not going to be great at describing particular symptoms and are probably even more so for their vet you know think about your dog or your cat has a sore paw it's not eating yeah there's a, a whole lot of very general things so i wonder whether the pet one is uh maybe not quite even as useful as the human one but certainly interesting and if we think about this as this isn't even this isn't even beta version this is this is like just these proof of concept type tools this at some point in the future and the gp one you can imagine the gp one hooked up to your apple watch hooked up to sleep trackers i've tried a gl continuous blood glucose monitor hooked up to something like that and so all that extra data that it can collect it can pass on that you wouldn't be able to give your gp currently when you just see them in the clinic i think there's a lot of potential here I think it's going to take a, a few iterations and probably a few years to get it really right and then also to get it really approved by the medical establishment because i think that's going to be another big challenge but i think this is pretty interesting exciting stuff certainly you can see you get a few free bees it looks like the freebies cross across the two let's jump back to our yeah three messages left so your free your free ones are uh split across the vet and the doctor i guess at least you get to choose one or the other you don't have to take your complaints to the vet i would definitely encourage you have a look i think it's just quite an interesting little one uh and hopefully this has been interesting to you as well i'll see you soon for more videos on ai stats research and random stuff